Hi, welcome to the introduction to cameras and the Nikon D3100. Remember, in these slides, they will have a brief, small quiz to get you some interaction and also allow you to test your skills in the slides. So just check out the video and you follow along with the slides on my wiki spaces. Remember, on that uh, wiki spaces I showed you in class. The slides allow you to start to understand how a camera works and why you would want to control certain parts of that camera. Welcome to the Nikon D3100 and cameras. So what does a DSLR stand for? Well, it's a single lens reflex, and that's a camera scheme. Uh, what is the history? We're going to go over that and an overview, all of those ideas, and why they're important. All cameras are alike. They all consist of that, you know, the lens right here, and then the aperture, which is located in that lens barrel. The uh, light passes through the lens, gets focused onto a plane that gets recorded. So all of the, all uh, cameras you've ever seen before is uh, based on the same principle, and that is a vaulted or darkened chamber that captures light. So light itself is bouncing everywhere and jumping around. So basically, you have to uh, simply capture that light and focus it on a plane so you can record it. So here you can see that a lot of those uh, light rays are bouncing everywhere from that image, and that's why you need to keep a lens. So all cameras uh, started from this, uh, you know, general camera obscura, which means vaulted chamber or room is the camera word, and obscura is means just means dark. So came, chamber or room, so it just means a darkened chamber or room, is an optical device that projects an image of its surroundings on a screen. So in this case, on a digital sensor, it'll be used to in drawing. So people used to use it for drawing for entertainment, and it's one of the inventions that led to photography and the modern camera. So this is an example of a modern day camera obscura, pretty rudimentary. And basically all of them are focusing the same as you just saw with that other design scheme there. So the camera obscura is just basically a box or room with a hole on one side. There's not really even a lens. So taking that lens out, now you have to figure out how you're going to focus that. So the lens allows you to focus the light. Before you just had that little uh, pinhole light. So the, generally the camera obscuras were still up, used up to the 1800s before we had a way to record and to showcase all of those images. Um, sometimes they're used today for general art classes, but they're not really practical, so not a lot of people use them as much as they used to. Just an example of someone using it in college. You can see that right here. There's a bellows to, re, to focus your, your image. You have that little pinhole light coming in, and the person's covering their face because they want to need they need a black or dark room. So now let's fast forward to an SLR and the DSLR. An SLR stands for single lens reflex camera. The digital SLR lens refer, refers to just the digital. The lens reflex design scheme is what we're going to talk about today. They both operate in the very same way, but they both use that mirror and a prism system, hence the reflectiveness or reflex from the mirror's reflection. Um, so basically the reason why we want this is so that the photographer can see what the image is projecting on the screen of either the sensor or the film is exactly what they're looking at, right? So before we didn't have that and we needed um, this design scheme. to. Do. Here's the mirror and here the light would come through the lens, hit the mirror, hit the screen, the focusing screen, hit the pentaprism, bounce around, and go out the eyepiece to your eye, right? So you look through the eyepiece like an old style camera, but now you have this nice brand new camera body that allows you to take a digital image. So when you push that trigger button, that mirror flips up, the light comes in, and it hits that sensor, and you have your image. So each camera has some sort of way to capture and store an image. Again, that's a, what, part of the definition of a camera. Some traditional cameras still use film. Uh, I actually have a few pieces of uh, uh, camera and darkroom equipment here at CAB still. Uh, new cameras are use a newer type of technology called a CMOS sensor. Does, you don't have to really know what it stands for, just know that it is a digital CMOS sensor. Including cell phone um, cameras also have the same type of sensor, although a lot smaller. So again, big difference between your cell phone camera and your DSLR. So again, remember the DSLR design scheme, this is with the mirror flipped up in live view, so the mirror is flipped up, the light comes in through the lens, 
hits that sensor and therefore you have your image on that camera screen. What you see is what you get. All right, so this is an overview of sensors. So all cameras are not alike. They all have different types of sensors, different sizes of sensors. You can see that there's a sensor here. This is what the use we use for our big, nice video cameras, our full frame 35 millimeter sensor. And that's the biggest sensor that we uh, actually currently own. That's why the cameras are so expensive. Uh, the Nikon DX format is what you'll be shooting on. And that's significantly smaller. You can see it's the purple one. And that one is pretty much uh, all we really need for a lot of our camera stuff. So all sensors are based on these principles of the light. So all light is made up of these three primary colors, red, green, and blue. And if you've ever taken my Digital Media 1 classes, you'll know that the red, green, and blue also is the, the tertiary colors or the secondary colors are yellow, um, cyan, and magenta. And when you combine all three of them together, you get white. So sensors all have this idea to capture different types of light, red, green, and blue light, to separate those channels and then to be mixed and displayed later on your either your camera screen or later on your computer screen. So remember that RGB model we just said? Um, if you ever have a camera, uh, if you ever do web design, you can also select different color ranges to get those ideas of red, green, and blue. So the SLR camera basics, what happens is that I just grabbed this offline. It's just a simple diagram to figure out, you know, what all these components are. And uh, this is, if you simplify the camera, this is what you get. So number one is the lens. Number two is the mirror. Five and six will not be in your quiz, but just remember that it's uh, number five is the focusing screen and number six is the condensing lens. It basically allows you to use the pentaprism design scheme, which is number seven, to get that light to hit the pentaprism and then out to the eyepiece so that you can see what you're going to get a picture of. Then once you push that shutter, that mirror flips up. Your shutter opens, which is number three, and number four is the sensor or film. Okay, so the, the light hits the sensor or film, which is that back plane there. And that's what captures the light. That's what it records. And that's what the definition of a camera is. So let's do a camera review. What does the word camera mean in Latin? Does it mean dark, vaulted chamber or room or darkened light? Of course, it means vaulted chamber or room. You click that button. And that's correct. A full definition of a darkened chamber room is a camera obscura. So let's go to the next slide. So we're going to identify the number three of the DSLR design scheme. So again, is it mirror, shutter bar, or lens? Number three is, of course, right here. Is it mirror, shutter bar, or lens? What do you guys think? Okay, of course, it's the shutter bar. I'm going to click that. And that's correct. Remember the previous lessons, the shutter creates the click sound as well as controlling the motion blur when exposing a sensor or film to the light. So we're going to identify number one of the DSLR design scheme. So again, is it the mirror, shutter bar, or lens? What is it? What do you think? Number one. Number one's right here. What is it? Mirror, shutter bar, or lens? Remember, this will be on your midterm. OK, it is the lens. Remember, from the previous lessons, the lens houses the aperture. It also allows the place where you would be able to change your angle of view and your focal length. As you know, why there's a bunch of different lenses because different lenses allow you to achieve different results and different ideas. So it's important to know and to adapt to what you need for that image. Go to the next slide. Number two of the DSLR design scheme. Mirror, shutter bar, or lens. Number two, mirror, shutter bar, lens. Of course, it is going to be the, what do you think? What do you think? It's the mirror. That's right. So remember, the mirror reflects the light from the lens into the pentaprism that goes into your eyepiece. It is also housed in front of the sensor or film. So remember, the light enters here, hits that mirror, bounces up, hits the pentaprism, and goes out your eyepiece. In case you forgot, when you take the picture, the mirror flips up, the shutter opens, and then the light enters and hits that RGB CMOS sensor. So we're going to control all three of these components of light, and that's uh, 
aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. So shutter is an actual part of the image and so is aperture, but ISO is just how sensitive the sensor is to the sensor. Aperture controls depth of field, shutter speed controls motion blur, and ISO controls image noise. Don't worry, there'll be more of that in a few minutes. So started with here, located in the lens, so it's in the lens. You can adjust the amount of light entering the lens measured as an F number. The F number is light through the lens. So that limits how much light physically enters that vaulted darkened chamber, right? So you have two, which would be the biggest. Sometimes they get even down to 1.4, 1.8. But two in this case is the biggest area of apertures. The larger your aperture, the smaller the number. So the larger your number, the smaller the aperture. Remember, it's all about ratios. It's your F ratio, your focal length versus how wide open the aperture is. The shutter. Shutter is uh, exposed the amount of, amount of time that the light enters and hits that sensor. So if you have a longer shutter speed, more light's going to hit the sensor. You're going to create some more of a blurring effect. So in this case, a faster shutter speed is 120, 1 120th of a second versus a slow shutter speed is over 4 seconds for this image. So here, you can see this is the exact same part of the day, 1 1 15th of a second, 1 60th of a second, 1 95th of a second, 1 1 1,000th of a second, and 1 2,000th of a second. So now you can go from darker or lighter to darker. It's also expressed in fractions of a second. So ISO, speed or sensitivity. Remember, to tell the camera the film speed of the selected film in your film camera. So if you're shooting in film, you're locked into that singular ISO range. Just means how sensitive the camera is to light. So if you have a lower number, it's less sensitive. If you have a higher number, it's more sensitive. More light needed to get a good exposure. Usually, natively, it's 400 to 800 ISO. Um, but the higher the number you go, the less light you need, but the more noise or grain you'll get with that image. So just be aware that the higher the number is, the easier it is to get that image, but also you're going to have some noise and grain. Sometimes you don't want that. Some of the best images actually are at the lower ISO scale. And remember, when you're working with your digital cameras, it's all about how bright or how dark your image needs to be for a particular image, not necessarily about the ISO of the film, because remember, the sensitivity of the sensor can be turned up or turned down per image. So it's greatly improved since we went to a digital platform instead of just the film camera. Pretty interesting. The last thing, not controlling the amount of light entering the camera, but all about how the colors match what you actually see in real life. So in here, um, usually middle white is around 5,500 Kelvin, and this is the Kelvin scale. And that's why you can see here, uh, that's mostly the whitest you can go. The lower the Kelvin scale, the redder it is. The higher the Kelvin scale, the more blue it is. You can see here there's um, white balance presets in your cameras, and that's in that uh, camera uh, icon menu. So this is a review. What does the aperture do? Does the aperture adjust the amount of light entering the lens? Does it administer exposure by limiting the amount of time which light is emitted through the sensor? Or is it an indication of the system's gain or sensitivity to light? What do you think? It adjusts the amount of light entering the lens is correct. So remember, aperture is located in the lens, and it controls the amount of light coming into the camera body. It also controls the depth of field which we didn't really discuss yet, but remember, the bigger the aperture, the smaller the depth of field. So in this case, this is a pretty small depth of field because only these things are in focus. And you can see that they're out of focus by the different images of the people from before and after this image of the queen from the 1950s. What does the shutter do? Is it the matter how much light hits the sensor or film? how much time the sensor or film can be exposed to light, or how sensitive or indication of the system's gain or sensitivity to light in the newer numerical output. What do you think? The shutter is how much time a sensor is exposed to light, number one. That's correct. Remember, the shutter bar also controls how much time the sensor is exposed to light 
it can also affect motion blur. So in my lecture, remember that if you're doing shooting handheld and you don't want a motion blur, you're going to be shooting at 1 60th of a second, 1 60th. That's a fraction of a second, 1 60th of a second to get the best image possible without getting any motion blur. What is ISO and what does it have to do with your image? How much light your image will have, indication of the system's gain or sensitivity to light, or how long your image will be exposed to light? What do you think? Of course, it's number two, indication of the system's gain or sensitivity to light. And that's right, because remember, the higher the ISO, it's all about the sensitivity of the sensor. But the more higher your sensor is, or the sensitivity of your sensor is, the more grain you're going to get. As you can see, the grain in this image, pretty grainy. So the end of this, just try to remember to how to control the camera. Hopefully you took some good notes. Um, because you'll be doing a demo in my classroom, and that's what part of this flipped classroom is, is that you have the time to understand this camera and all its components, and then utilize that, and then to give a demo in class, so you can have that whole hour and 20 minutes to uh, learn the camera and to understand it, and that's why you need to learn this at home. Remember, cameras are really great for communicating an idea, because um, pictures can tell millions of words, um, it's all not all about all the camera gear you have. It's about telling the story. So even if you don't have a fancy camera, which you will have access to in my class, but let's say you come later, it's not all about the fancy camera. It's about how you control the story and how that story is communicated to the viewer. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video.